バイリンガルウェブマガジン DIG 東京のディレクターを務めるカズーこと G ・カズオペニアです。英語力がどんどんつく学習法へようこそ。DIG 東京は8つのカテゴリーのコラムを日本語と英語で併記しているウェブマガジンです。英語力がどんどんつく学習法は僕がこれまでの翻訳や通訳の仕事を通して培ったさまざまな英語上達についてのノウハウをレッスン形式にまとめたもので、読む、書く、聞く、話すという4つのスキルが身につくと思います。ディグ東京のビジネスやライフスタイルに関するコラムのテキストを用いるのでビジネスですぐに使える英語力や旅行や海外での生活に役立つ英会話力がつきますディグ東京のテキストと YouTube の動画を使ったこのレッスンを繰り返すことで大学受験のための英語力はもちろんのこと TOEIC、TOEFL、英検などの試験のための英語力もどんどんつくことでしょうではこのレッスンの方法について説明しますまずは DIG 東京のテキストのページと YouTube の動画をタブや別ウィンドウを使って両方ともすぐ見られる状態にしてくださいそうしたら DIG 東京の日本語のテキストだけをまず先に読んでください次に英語のテキストだけを読んでください英語のテキストでわからない英単語や熟語をネット検索を使って自分で調べてみましょうもちろんわからない日本語があればそれもチェックしてください次に英語のテキストをもう一度読んでみてください。これで予習が終了です。ここからこの動画によるレッスンを行います。この YouTube の動画を再生させて英語を聞きながら DIG 東京の英語テキストを目読してください。次に英語テキストを見ないでこの YouTube の動画だけを見ながら英語をよく聞いてください。最後に YouTube の音声に合わせて英語テキストを音読してください。以上のステップを繰り返すことで、英語の表現力、読解力、ヒアリング力、スピーキング力が確実に上達するはずです。2回目以降のレッスンの際には、この画面の下にあるもっと見るを開いて、テキストの朗読のところをクリックしてください。すぐにテキスト本文を読み上げる部分に行けます。今回は Sports and Culture 7 Special Feature I want you to look at my prospects for the future. Plants and I at the Yayoi Kusama Museum. 去年後半に草間弥生美術館で開催されていた展覧会「未来への我が展望を見てほしい植物と私」について書きました楽しみながらレッスンしましょう1 A singular museum in the middle of a quiet residential neighborhood When the Yayoi Kusama Museum opened in fall of 2017 in the Bentenjo neighborhood of Shinjuku, Tokyo Fans of the legendary avant garde artist finally got a place where they could see her work permanently. Following numerous exhibitions at renowned museums around the world, her infinity nets, polka dots, pumpkins, and more have captured the imaginations of contemporary art lovers and Instagrammers alike. A survey of museum attendants conducted by the art newspaper named Ksama, the world's most popular artist in 2014. And in 2016, she received Japan's Order of Culture, one of the highest honors bestowed by the imperial family. The arrival of the white walled modernist building was itself a splash of contemporary art in the middle of an otherwise unassuming and unremarkable residential area. Making the most of limited space, the structure is comprised of cubes stacked atop one another with rounded corners. The individual galleries inside are minimalistic spaces that consist of white walls, high ceilings, and floor to ceiling glass windows. Although located between Waseda University and the upscale Kagurazaka neighborhood, for most, the museum will be off the beaten path. There are hardly any other landmarks in the neighborhood, and few cafes or eateries to hang out before or after a visit. With tickets for a set number of slots available exclusively online, No door tickets are available. This is not a place that tourists will stumble across. It is a secluded haven that must be sought out. The museum's latest exhibition, I want you to look at my prospects for the future, Plants and I, which runs until February 28, 2019, is a journey through Ksama's relationship with plants, botanical imagery, and self portraits, from sketches she made in her teens to some of her early works as an avant garde artist. Two selections from her more recent paintings. It showcases 35 of Kusama's works across five floors and provides a snapshot of her evolution as an artist, as well as a sensory experience of the themes central to her work. 2. Down the Rabbit Hole. 
After checking in at the first floor reception desk, visitors can stash their belongings away in a locker and then head up the stairs to the second floor gallery. There, they are greeted by Xama's poetic reflection on childhood, called Violet Obsession, which begins as follows. One day, suddenly, my voice is the voice of a violet. Xama was born to a family that owned a seed nursery business and grew up surrounded by seed harvesting grounds. Plants have long been an important part of Xama's identity, both as subjects of her art and the frightening figures that terrorize her in the form of hallucinations she has suffered since she was a child. In the softly lit space is a number of her early Nihonga works, 70s collages, and later videography. The latter especially is both beautiful and horrifying. One depicts the artist with Gerbera flowers around her neck, and in another, she appears to be surrounded by sunflowers that seem to be closing in on her. At first glance, she appears to be at the mercy of her obsessions, but in the face of the onslaught, she does not blink. Instead, she stares back and confronts the hallucinations that plague her. As visitors exit the second floor gallery space, they inevitably cast another glance at the poem, which ends as follows. I don't want to grow up. Not yet. All I ask is one more year. Just leave us alone that long. The idea of wanting to stay a child may be difficult to relate to for Westerners, where the primary motivator throughout childhood is the unbridled desire to grow up. Our relationship with the world changes as we become an adult. As a child, the world happens to us, but as an adult, we happen to the world. In Western cultures, being a child represents naivete, powerlessness, self-centeredness, and adjectives like childlike and childish are nothing to be proud of, sometimes connoting inappropriateness and even wickedness. Childhood innocence, especially in Western society, is something to grow out of, something that must be shed or lost. It wasn't until the 19th century that the concept of a child entered the public consciousness and was acknowledged. Up until then, children were small-scale mini-adults who were immature and ill-equipped for heavy physical labor. Theirs was a wicked existence with little value in terms of manpower. However, in agrarian societies based on rice farming, where the work was troublesome but not burdensome, children were an important source of manpower, tasked with helping make ends meet for the family. As a result, children have long been cherished in Japanese society. This tends to be true for any society that is based on rice farming, i.e. monsoon Asia. Naturally, the Japanese found beauty in the immaturity of childhood. It is their obsession. This is manifested in their appreciation of anime as entertainment for all ages and their fondness for character-themed merchandise even as adults. Ride the train and you can often see salary men flipping through manga anthology weeklies, although these days they are often swiping instead. Personally, I've always found this aspect of Japanese society perverse and perplexing. But while Xema's colorful work, not to mention her persona, is nostalgic and childlike, it is also undoubtedly striking and unapologetic. Bold and unflinching, she makes the case that there is a universal beauty to things that are childlike. 3. Losing Yourself in Art on the third floor are 15 works from the artist's ongoing My Eternal Soul series, colorful acrylic expressions of abstraction and figurativeness borne across square panels. These works represent the culmination of the various styles and elements that Xuma herself has developed over the years. Taking in each work in the well-lit space is a trippy experience, as if you were peering through a microscope to get an up-close look at slides straight out of Xuma's inner psyche. In one painting, the repeated motif of a human face in profile resembles a series of musical notes, playing the same note to the same beat on an endless loop. This immersion is amplified by the passing winter, a small peep-in mirror room in the center of the space. It has the effect of making the room feel more expansive than it actually is, while simultaneously drawing the observer towards it like a moth to a flame. Peer inside one of the circular holes on the sides, and the observer will see themselves reflected infinitely on the mirrors inside. I was immediately reminded of a mirror ball in the middle of a dance floor, recasting everything in its environment in a new, unceasing light. 
Ksama's work exudes the kind of louche vibe that hangs around club culture and the underground. Speaking of infinity, visitors can experience another world on Infinite Loop, this time on a larger scale, just upstairs. On the fourth floor is Pumpkins Screaming About Love Beyond Infinity, a mirror room produced especially for the museum. Inside, spotted pumpkins flicker in the dark repeatedly, creating the illusion of an infinite pumpkin patch. Although the room features no music, as I stood mesmerized amid the glowing pumpkins, it struck me yet again that the aesthetic would not feel out of place at a nightclub. Much like a darkened dance floor, the dark space channels your focus and your senses into the here and now, where Ksama masterfully opens your eyes to the infinite possibilities that stretch out before us. The idea of infinity and the recurrence of single motifs is an artistic philosophy that Ksama calls self-obliteration. For her, it is a form of art therapy, a way to overcome the obsessions and hallucinations that have imposed themselves upon her since childhood. While I do not share her afflictions, I can relate to the comfort she finds in repetition. For me, dance music, specifically the four-on-the-floor variety, has helped me through tough moments in my life serving as a kind of music therapy. Unlike pop music and other conventional music, dance music is not about the melody so much as it is the recurrence of musical motifs and the unending repetition of a beat. Simply listening to this type of music recreates the feeling of a psychedelic high, a kind of hypnosis. In a setting such as a nightclub, there is a moment when you lose yourself in the music. You lose all sense of self and reality and, as the cliché goes, become one with the universe. For me, music therapy has long been my way of dealing with the trials and tribulations of life. It is where I achieve my self-obliteration. In her poem that accompanies the fourth floor mirror room, Ksama writes, I have captured the dignity of such pumpkins and their eternal expression of love towards humanity here in this mirror room. Much like Campbell's soup cans were for pop art icon Andy Warhol, Pumpkins are a charming, comical, childlike motif that fascinates Ksama. Through them, she has turned an obsession and her affliction into enchanting, inspiring art. Similarly, a lot of dance music is criticized for blunt, cheesy lyrics or cold, inorganic constitution. But for me, what Ksama shares with the dance music ethos is this expression of love and boundless hope for the future. 4. A break in the clouds. On the fifth floor, beyond a small library of books related to the artist's past exhibition catalogs and novels, sits the last work of the exhibition, Starry Pumpkin, a sculpture covered in pink and gold tiles. On the other end of the open air space is a bench in front of a window looking out over the surrounding neighborhood. But fittingly, especially for an introspective artist like Ksama, the most fascinating attraction is the one within the space. If time allows, I highly encourage visitors to take a moment to sit with your back to the window, taking in the sculpture, which looks as if it might have fallen from the heavens. With white walls, square tile floor, and the backdrop of sky, the space has the serenity of a Zen garden and is a welcome breath of fresh air after the emotional journey and high that precedes it. Despite being just five floors up, the observer is made to feel as if they are in a castle in the sky where the hustle and bustle of the city along with any worldly concerns, has fallen away. It's as if you could be on the 50th floor or the 100th floor. If the works on the second floor began a journey down the rabbit hole, and the third and fourth floors involved losing yourself on the dance floor of Ksama's imagination, then the fifth floor is the experience of walking out of the dark club and into the light, emerging from a psychological trip and being rewarded with a fleeting moment of solace. It is in these final moments of the exhibition that you feel like you've been freed from the tortured mind of an artist whose creativity knows no mortal bounds. Waiting on the other side is Satori, a kind of revelatory experience, a spiritual awakening. Today, Ksama is one of the world's leading contemporary artists, and I want you to look at my prospects for the future, plants and I, clearly shows why. Driven by the urge to create, she boldly confronts and embraces her obsessions and expresses them as only she can. Her art is a guiding light that just might lead all of us out of the darkness and deadlock.
以上、スポーツカルチャー7スペシャルフィーチャー。I want you to look at my prospects for the future. Plants and I at the Yayoi Kusama Museum の英語テキストを朗読しました。いかがでしたかこのコンテンツが気に入ったら、YouTube のこの動画の右下にあるボタンからチャンネル登録をぜひ行ってください。テキストの最後にある Facebook、Twitter、Instagram のアイコンから DIG 東京の公式アカウントに入り、フォローしてください。ご意見ご要望がありましたら YouTube や SNS のコメント欄にご記入ください。www.digtokyo.jp